You're watching Queen the Greatest, and in this episode we revisit yet another of the band's standout hits, One Vision. In September 1985, Queen returned to Musicland Studios in Munich with the idea of getting together to see what happened. It resulted in a new song that would be only the second in their career to be credited as written by Queen rather than a specific band member. Freddie was on the phone and he wanted to go back in the studio and, and do some more recording. So in the end we went uh, back in the studio and we actually recorded another single. It was his idea really that we should go in and actually write a song together. Uh, in fact, uh, I was late getting to the recording sessions because um, I was actually on holiday at the time. But, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's his credit as, as a Queen composition. Um, but I would, to be honest, I would say it was mainly, you know, Roger, Brian and Feddy that did most of the writing for it. The song's creation began with a riff created by Brian and some lyric ideas from Roger. Yeah, I had a sort of um, set of lyrics that I, I think I used for two songs, actually. Um, with sort of uh, amendments, but uh, I think it started with that, those lyrics and we literally wrote the song between ourselves in the studio then, around those lyrics really, and we were all throwing in, you know, bits of chicken bones. And... As the song started to take shape, it was clear that Queen were at a stage where this way of working suited them. We know where to stop with each other, we know how far we can go, and um, we respect each other. And um, we think that in spite of all the problems that we may have, that Queen is still something uh, just kind of precious. If something happens which is a situation where you can be creative and it, it works for a long time, you're very lucky. You know, I'm sure I can leave the group and I can find people to play with who will do exactly what I tell them, but it won't be, uh, it won't be the same as what we have. That really was a, a proper collaboration of, of everybody. I mean, Brian came up with a riff, and then John came up with a bass part, and, and, and Fred came up with a Chinese menu, which uh, he, was, he was reading at the end. And we've got a version that's it somewhere. He goes through the half the menu. That's um, quite, which is why we kept fried chicken in, at the end. One man, one dog, one true religion. One dumb, one turd, two tits, John Deacon. Although the process had been an unusual one for the band, the end result was another global smash hit, even if, as Roger admitted at the time, the sentiment behind his original lyric ideas had got lost along the way. The original words actually were about Martin Luther King, and um, now I don't know, I haven't got a clue what it's about. <laughs> Somebody said it was about Bob Geldof, but I don't think it is. No. So you don't know what it's about, but it's... No, not anymore. Riveting. Well, they changed all my words. Who did? Like that rotter Freddy. On its way to being a fan favourite, One Vision would also serve as a memorable opening number for the Magic Tour. <laughs>
all over the place singing we, we 